Welcome. I am so happy you're here today because I am interviewing a dear friend of mine, Marcy, and a friend and business partner of hers, Allison. Friends for nearly a decade, Elated Spaces co-founders Marcy and Allison worked together on home decorating projects for years. Before becoming certified home stagers and redesigners, some of their favorite days of the years were their shopping days. Not only were those days filled with inspiring design eye candy and thoughtful styling suggestions for each other, but they also led to the girls bonding over the deep stuff like personal development, big visions, and quirky passions. Allison and Marcy love getting to know the people behind each and every design project they work on and helping clients pinpoint what exactly lights them up about a room making their often difficult to articulate visions into a reality. Together, they are a joyful force of inspiration, helping homeowners, realtors, and investors create swoon-worthy spaces that help each property reach its full potential. Welcome, Marcy and Allison. I am so happy y'all are here today. Thank Hi, you. Thank you yes, we're so excited to be here. This is so sure. fun. Yeah, Kelly, I know that. <laughs> I've known you a long time and I've known Allison about as long as I've known you. Okay. So this is like a full circle moment. Yes. Yeah. I know. Isn't it crazy? We met like exactly 10 years ago. Like, yeah. 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 That's wild in a coaching program. And we bonded over a lot of personal development too. We sure did. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We were yep. coaching practice buddies, yep. which That's was so right. awesome. Yeah. So yeah, y'all say that personal development is a big part of y'all's relationship. And it mm -hmm. sounds like you even use it in your practice and your business. Absolutely. Sure do. Yeah. And I think um, for people who are starting a business, well, one with themselves, but, but especially with somebody else, mm -hmm. um, you know, everyday life, there's triggers that come up. There's stuff that, um, can just get in the way of day-to-day -day life and a successful business day and all that. So, so like with us, um, you know, if I get annoyed about something, I'm like, that has nothing to do with her. It has everything to do with me. Yeah. And so, right. Which is the case most of the time anyway. So <laughs> stop. <laughs> well, she got. Oh, stop. <laughs> no, but, but, but like vice versa, it, it's like, she's very self-reflective. So there's, and, and I, before we even started, I said, there are not many people in this world that I could imagine sure. having a business with. Yeah. And because we're both really self-reflective, um, and we're, you know, in tune with like what, what's, what's going on externally, internally and all that. It, it allows us to like move through kind of like the little blips that happen because starting a business is hard exactly. and running a business day to day is hard. And then it, when right. you compact the emotional stuff right. on top of that, it can be really challenging. On top of being so. together, you know, 24, seven, 24, seven, we're yeah. together so much. So every little thing that comes up, you know, we're in the car and we're, you know, talking about it as soon as they get in the car, oh my gosh, did you? Did, you know, did this comment bother you or, you yep. know, it's, so I don't wake up with it in the middle of the night and be like, Oh, I wonder if I made her mad or. Yeah. That, it's so funny that you say that. Cause that's actually how it often starts. We'll be like, um, you know, I, I don't want to be, I'll be, I will be up all night if I don't ask you this. It's like, <laughs> and like, usually I'll say something and she'll be like, yeah. I literally didn't even register that. Yeah. But it, but it, like to be okay to speak for, you know, my anxious parts or like my high strung parts. And like, she's got her own stuff. Yeah. It's like, you know, we could talk the entire podcast. But it's also, yeah. so <laughs> I know it's not I the know. whole thing, but, but it's led us to what our strengths and weaknesses are in, in our parts and what we do. So I think just that constant evaluation is, is, has been so crucial to our yeah. continuation of what we're doing every day. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And from That's like awesome. that like the spiritual kind of perspective, like we can say, you know, if I say, oh, like, okay, here we are. It's another, it's another life growth moment or it's an, yeah. you know, oh, we just manifested that, you know, like she yeah. gets it and she's not like, what is she talking about? <laughs> right. 
So, and, and to circle back to what you were saying, Kelly, about working with clients, like we're advocates for bringing the joy or bringing the happy out of people. So we are with um, a new client on Friday and she's saying, oh, should I bring this furniture from my old house to our new beach house, da, 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 you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, does it make you happy? Right. Does this light you up? Right. Marie Kondo 101, right. Mm -hmm. It's like, does this make you happy? And she's like, well, not really. I'm like, then don't bring it with you. You know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's funny, yeah. like people run into this funny kind of mental block with, with their own designs and own spaces, because, you know, you have considerations of what your lifestyle is and, you know, what your husband likes or what you have to have in your home because it was your, your grandmother's or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's really looking at, at each piece and say, okay, well, this is a huge part of, of your space. Is it something that is, is part of your life? You know, do you need, do you need a part of your life or do you not need a part of your life? So that's, it's, that's kind of how we apply that to people too. That's a really important point. Like people really hold on to heirlooms, anything yep. that was passed down from a parent or especially a grandparent, even mm -hmm. if they don't like it. Yep. Sure I, I can imagine how hard it is to get rid of something like that. Yeah. 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 So it's just incorporating it into, into the space where it's, where it's, where they're happy with it. Mm -hmm. So it obviously brings them joy because it makes them think of, you know, their grandparents, but how, do, how can you then, then put it somewhere where it fits? Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if it doesn't bring them joy, mm -hmm. then, yeah, then I think that they need your guidance to be yeah. able to let go of it. Exactly. And like, they can look at it. At, I mean, what's coming to my old coaching mind is how can they view it as someone else will find joy? Absolutely. It. And Absolutely. really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love that you said that because yeah, there is like this letting go process sometimes when you're, especially when you're decluttering. Right. right. And so, you know, there goes back to the, the personal development stuff. It's like, okay, how can you honor your great grandmother, even though you hate that tea set she gave you, you know, it's right. so it's right. kind of peeling through right. those layers too. Yeah. So. so there's a huge mental piece, taking a step back and reevaluating what, what things serve a purpose and which purpose they serve in your life. That makes sense. Yeah. So we kind of jumped ahead, but I'd love to hear a little about y'all. Yeah. About <laughs> y'all's backgrounds. You know, Marcy, I know a little bit about yours. Mm -hmm. but my listeners don't know a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I, do you want to start from the beginning or, you know, I, I, this is, this is not my first business. Um, I am a purebred entrepreneur through and through come from a family of entrepreneurs. Um, so Kelly and I had met um, with, through one of my first businesses, which, which was life coaching. Um, prior to that, I had gotten a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, um, started in that field for a little bit and decided life coaching was more along the lines of um, what resonated most with me. Um, and from there, I ended up kind of pivoting into a business with my brother that just kind of happened. Um, and that was an e-commerce company, which we grew to a, a sizable amount. And, um, and then once we kind of got in a role with that, um, seven years in, well, we're about seven years now and, um, we're like, we don't really enjoy this. So we put a management company in place to run the day to day for us. And that freed up some time. So he started doing something that he was lit up about. And that's how Allison and I started, um, I mean, I'll let you share your background and then we can tell kind of how we got into related sure, spaces. Sure. But. I, well, I was, you know, I graduated with psychology degree. So I've always been interested in the, in the, the personal development and in sociology, the, the personal development and the people. So this is really just right up my alley. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I was, I was teaching for, for several years. And, um, that's pretty much my professional background. Then I've been home for a while and, um, kind of going into it a lot of time for self-reflection and, mm -hmm. and what would be a good fit for me now. Mm -hmm. And, um, again, like kind of knowing that Marcy would be somebody that I could see myself working with. Um, and, and I knew it would be a good fit. So, um, yeah. 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 So it's kind of funny how we got started, you know, in, in our bio, Kelly, you were saying that, 
Um, we worked on projects together for years. Like we we're, we're both kind of Pinterest junkies, like original yeah. OG Pinterest junkies, right? Yeah. <laughs> when the first thing I was like, I would like lose so many yeah. hours sleep just getting awake and I yeah. pinning stuff like that's a beautiful room. I love that pillow setup, Aww. you know? And so we would kind of like bounce ideas off yeah. each other. Cause it's hard to come up with, I mean, Kelly, you're an artist, so it's probably not hard for you, but for, <laughs> for most people, it's hard to create something. And it's like, does this really look okay? You know? Mm -hmm. And, um, so we'd be bringing each other in like, oh, can you help me like redesign this layout or like, what about this artwork and all that stuff? Yep. And so then we'd go on our shopping days and we'd be on like a quest and we'd be like, okay, we're finding art that's this size and it's going to go here and yep. you know, all this stuff. Yeah. And it, it, those were really bonding days. Yep. And then like, we, we never thought about doing anything like this professionally. And people started to come to our houses and make comments like, oh, it's so beautiful in here. Wow. I can't believe you thought to do that. And right. then, and then those comments started to grow to have you ever thought about doing something like this yeah. to, can I hire you to do my bedroom? <laughs> and, wow. you know, and it went like that. And it's like, no, no, no. We just do this for fun. I just do this for fun. And, um, it's like, no, really, we need help. And I want to pay you. And Kelly, you know, yeah. from like the coaching days, right. It's right. Like, the market's literally telling you, like, yeah, I want to pay you for this. Here's my credit card, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so I'm like, all right, well, what the hell you want to, you want right. to try it. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah, yeah. Good. Well, organically, like just could not be more ideal. Um, it just it's the growth and the way it came to be. Yeah. And then kind of one day realizing, wow, like this could be something like we Definitely. can get this together and we can do this. Yeah. And that's all it yeah. took from yeah. there on out, you know, coming out of COVID and, and all that too. Yeah, it, was it, it was kind of a fresh start for, mm. for us a lot of ways. So definitely. Um, yeah. It, it like, it started as like, well, let's not just like right off the bat, be like, we're going to create a business. Yeah. You know, it was like, yeah. let's just play. Yeah. And that was a really nice approach to this business versus like, okay, I got to do this. I can do this. Yeah. It was like, let's just play and see what happens. And if it gets traction, then like, we'll worry about that then. Right. And it was like referral, referral, referral. And like, it started to snowball. I'm like, holy shit, we need some like formal training now. <laughs> You're like, let's actually start a, start an actual business. So, so mm -hmm. we did. So, you know, we just, went in with no pressure and then it evolved. And, and now like we pretty much have a waiting list and it's wow. so fast and yeah, yeah, fast. yeah. It's, and it's been fun. It's been challenging. And I'm sure your entrepreneurs will want to hear about those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the oh, yeah. Right. yeah. The so timing good. really sounds great because during lockdown, people were working on home improvement projects, you know, mm -hmm. construction was just blowing up and yeah. since coming out of lockdown, but, you know, obviously we're still in pandemic, but um, uh, home sales have just skyrocketed and all of that. So people really need what you're doing. And when you look back and think about all the home improvement projects people did, well, they don't know how to decorate. So they've got all of this, you know, like a new room or they knocked out walls or put up a wall or something. It's like, okay, now what? We've got right. this new space, but it doesn't look so good. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like Allison likes to say, it's like, it's like, you know, making a cupcake and not putting the frosting on. It's just a muffin. You know? <laughs> that's great. It's, it's like, that's exactly true. It's like, you could have the structure, like you got all yeah. the things there, but like you didn't frost it right. And you didn't have yeah. the sprinkles and th those kind of things mm -hmm. that really, you know, make, make a room pop and, you know, right. be happy to get into and if it's some of those space that you're going to, yeah. you know, if, if there's this new space that you have that you envisioned being, you know, uh, you know, a relaxing room, like you want to, you want it to be relaxing with, everything in it so mm -hmm. you, know, you have this new room and it's yeah you know, so yeah yeah no so what are some of the challenges then that y'all have experienced starting a business running I mean, a business? It, starts, yeah. <laughs> it, starts, it starts with all the typical business challenges anyone would face so all those those difficult things setting up the business and the licenses and the and the you know um, yeah. More and formal parts. I remember going through that process and, yeah. and I, I've set up LLCs before, like I have gone through it. And so even though I can't, every time you've, you know, started, you know, something new, it's like, wait, how, where do I go on the DRS website for that? You know, mm -hmm. like trying, to, trying to figure that stuff out. But I remember us setting the business up and you like being like, I would totally give up. This <laughs> my Not even, I would start down. Right yeah, there. yeah. 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 Well, and for y'all having a physical, I mean, not a physical store, yeah. but doing what you do, it's, you know, it's not online. 
Right. So, and not selling digital products or whatever. So, and this is different from what you, Marcy, did with your brother with e-commerce. So I'm assuming you have different kind of licenses, you know? Yes. Like yes. we didn't need a license when we were coaches, except, you know, we got certifications. Right. But right. we didn't need business licenses. Right. Do you yeah. need anything like that for this business? For, um to be like a, an interior designer, like we, we always kind of say there's like a spectrum. So there's, you know, like stagers, decorators, and interior designers, interior designer is, you know, like a four-year degree plus they're working. I'm sorry, what were your face <laughs> <laughs> with, you know, structural changes. So, so it's like, you know, if you need a shot from the doctor, could you get it from a surgeon? Yes. But most people just need to see the APRN, you know? So, yeah. so for us, like we can can we go and decorate someone's house without a license? You know, because we're not calling ourselves interior designers. We don't have that kind of surgeon level degree. Then, mm -hmm. then yeah. So there's, um, but like for license, like street certification, as you were kind of saying. So for us, um, we're constantly taking courses and like, okay, yep. And we want to move on and we want to take, you know, this other thing or, oh, this, this new thing, like, like fabrics have come up with doing upholstery mm. for clients. We're not doing it. We're like, we could use some more growth around, sure. you know, fabric yep. and textiles mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, um, so like the licenses she's referring to, like even something as simple as, um, you know, we found out we had to charge sales tax, like <gasps> a little bit oh. late, <laughs> and, even though and it's it, a service. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. my god. Design services, even though it's not interior design, like any sort of design service is taxed in the state yeah. of Connecticut where we are. So, um, you know, and like, even then just, following along with, you know, the filings and all that stuff, which sounds so basic, you know, I'm saying this to the listeners are like, yeah, of course you got to file us. It's like, it's not like, oh, we just didn't do our taxes that year. It's like, there's, right. there's timetables, you know, you got to file monthly and you have to do it right. within a certain time window and all that right. stuff. So the first time we filed our sales tax, um, we were late. We, we got, we got a, you know, $50 yeah. penalty yeah, there. Like nobody tells you like, oh, mm. you have to, you know, this, this is the first month you have to start doing this. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. So. so, so there's like some of those, like, logistical businessy mm -hmm. challenges that we face. But then I remember when we first started, we kept saying, okay, so we're doing something new and it's kind of a new ish industry in our, in our area, the staging mm -hmm. is anyway, mm -hmm. um, you know, decorating has been around forever. Um, and then we're also trying to work on a new business too. So there was a lot of newness all happening at once. Like you're, you're mm -hmm. kind of trying out new skills while you're supposed to be like the expert. Right. right. So it's, a, it was a lot of, um, I know you have a podcast about imposter syndrome. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so it's like a lot of that gets kicked up too. It's like, you know, people are paying you to help, to help them. And we've struggled. I don't want to say struggled. It's like, we've graduated our fees over time too. Mm -hmm. You know, what we were charging in the beginning, we're like, oh my gosh. Like we right. always joke that for our first project, we, we made like a penny an hour. <laughs> we, we put in so <laughs> right. much right. time because it's so important to right. us to do a good job. And, and I think that's a personality thing too. And it's, it's something yeah. we have in common, you know, like yeah. we, yeah. again, like elated spaces, like we, we are truly there for the client. Like we will work, work, work till we get it right. Mm -hmm. And maybe even to like a fault, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, and yeah. I, you know, and I tell my clients and listeners that for your first few clients, you know, when you're just starting, it's okay to undercharge for those clients because you're building your portfolio and exactly. getting testimonials, you know, exactly. as long as those two things happen, exactly. then okay. Yeah. But yeah. then <laughs> you need to figure out, okay, how much did I really make? And like you said, pennies per hour, then right. you're doing that. <laughs> penny, penny per hour. <laughs> then you figure that out and you're like, okay, I did that three times. Yeah. I have a reasonable portfolio now or enough to put on the website. I've right. got three excellent testimonials. Boom. Right. These skyrocket. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. And it's, and it's, it's evolved over time. We've, you know, experimented with different like layers of packaging and stuff. And that's, and that's been challenging. And I, I'm sure your listeners can appreciate too. Like when you're even, even when you're established, it's like, well, something's right. not working for me anymore. Right. I need to, I need to switch that up. Like and a lot of people in our industry do hourly charging and mm -hmm. like we're, we can talk about this Kelly, right? Like we're not quite, we're not comfortable doing that because uh -uh. we're 
dedicated to finding the perfect table. Yeah. You know? And people don't like to sign on projects for, with a blank check. Yeah. No. You know, it's like you, it's- your, your clients would be paying y'all so much money if y'all yeah. charge them by the hour, because Marcy, you and I recently texted about what y'all were on site until like 3 a.m. And, or was that you were on site until three or you got home at three? Either way, you would have had to charge them until like 3 a.m. Yeah. Oh my God. And yeah, nobody wants to to pay that much. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, it was like do or die. You know, it was like we, um, we overpacked (laughs) for that one. That was a a stage. Um, yeah, we, we brought like, I'm an overpacker anyway, when I travel. So I'm like, yeah. I need 72 outfits so I can make sure I have options. Right. You know, so we were like, roommates a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's like, that's not the client's fault. Like, like she hired us to right. do a job right. and we're going to make this look beautiful. And we're not going to leave until right. we're comfortable with how it looks. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it, you know, and it ended up just being one of those things where it just took forever. Right. And, but, but you know, self-reflective, right? Oh, we started the conversation on the way home. We're like, okay, what needs to happen differently? Yep. So this doesn't happen again. Yep. Like there what? was a lot of talk about that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we actually even talked about like, kind of it being like a, like a, a higher growth sort of thing of like, oh, okay, sure. that was during spring break for our kids and we were going to take spring break off, but we kind of got, I don't want to say talked into because we willingly went, um, yep. the client was like really good, you know, need this done this time. Like if you can make it possible in any way, so appreciate it. We said, let's just do it. Yep. And then we're like, this is our penance, you know, yep. here we are it's three in the morning and we're just getting home. It's like, is this karma because we didn't hold our good boundaries, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like those, those kind of things are where we can also be self-reflective both process processes, but then also like, how about what are we doing? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like, I'm always like looking back and saying, okay, well, we could have done this diff- differently or, but there's, there's a lot of things that come up that are unexpected, you know, like you have all this stuff and it's, you're going in transit and things break and things get damaged. And then you're like on site, Oh, wait, we need to go <laughs> run to the store and buy something new to replace this item or yeah, whatever. So it's those things that come up like during the day that you're, mm-hmm. you're not expecting that really kind yeah. of yeah, off, so absolutely. Yeah. And for your, your, um, digital entrepreneurs, you know, that's like the equivalent of like tech, not going right. You know, it's like, okay, this should have taken this long, but instead, you know, yeah. yeah. Yep. And those things just come up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Something always does. Yeah. Or you just never know when something may. Yeah. 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 My goodness. Uh, well, it certainly sounds like an adventure and super fun. Yeah. I mean, y'all, your yeah. just dynamics and everything. I love it. I yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's like our biggest selling yeah. point. We yeah. say we get love luxury customer service. Luxury customer service. <laughs> for sure. yes. yes, that's our yeah. that's one offer. But it's, it's funny because like, you know, going back to challenges, right? Like it can be really, um, inefficient sometimes for us Mm. both to be on a job, but it's like, we work better together. We are better together. You know, if you've got two people, like I'm like a throw spaghetti at the wall, like, well, what about this? What about this? And she's like, "Mm -mm, mm -mm." (laughs) and and having that feedback, it's like the the client gets the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. And then we can all kind of bounce ideas around and we're just fun. We're just, you know, we're, we're we're, fun and we like being together and you know, yeah, like people. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, even if we're shopping and we're like, you know, like, if we don't agree on something, we don't take offense. Like if, if she picks something out and I'm like, Oh no, no. <laughs> she does like, that a lot. I, and you do that a lot to me, but yeah. it's just like, it's fine because like, you know, that whatever we like together is going to be the best option. So right. That's, yeah. that's what she says. She's like, yeah. if we both are like, yes, then we know that it's, it's right. That it's right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, y'all made some slides and have some yeah. tips, don't you? Why don't we Me get too. into that? Yeah. Some thought, design tips. Some right? design tips. Yes. Yeah. Like Fun. standard kind of. Yeah. Pr- principles. Um, right. Cool. Yeah. And we thought, um, while I'm getting this set, um, that it would just be be helpful. Like we're here talking about kind of what we do and who couldn't benefit from like a little help with how to make things look better. These are kind of yeah. standard that like, you know, yep. maybe you notice in pictures or whatever, you know, people's yeah. houses or you walk into somebody's house and something just doesn't feel right. A lot of times it's these little things. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. exactly. Awesome. Sure the best place to put us is mm-hmm. there we go. If I do that. 
Okay, there we go. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, that didn't work. Can you see me okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. There we go. All right, so here's some simple design tips for you guys. <laughs> yep. And we course, and here we go, right? We did test this. We did. Yeah. We're good. Yep, we're good. Okay, so that's back. Oh my word. Sorry we about know that. This is what the audience sees. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. there we go. Yay. All right, so I'm gonna to try to find a good spot to put us if I put us over there, maybe. Um, okay, so so when I, when we were thinking about doing this interview, we were like, okay, so what are some things that we see that like if we could just give people a few tips like for how they can kind of audit their their own spaces and their own rooms, like what are some of the big challenges that we see their mistakes that we see people make? And the first thing that came to mind is artwork. So like properly sized artwork. So I'm gonna to jump to the next slide here and then I'm gonna come back to this one because it shows like mistakes people make with artwork. So wrong height, wrong size, wrong spacing. And I've got the, you know, these images here that show like, you know, wrong height, either something is way too high, which is what we see more often than not. You know, if you, if you go on to, um, you know, any listing on realtor.com, if it hasn't been professionally staged or professionally designed, most likely you will see, you'll yeah. see this artwork that's hung way too high. We, we had a client and she had her TV hung really high, mm. beautiful custom art piece hung really high. And it just, it didn't work with the room. And, and I was like, I know that this would mean taking the TV down and readjusting it. You guys are probably used to seeing it up there. I was like, but as a decorator, like it, it's my duty to tell you that it that it should yeah. be lower yeah. isn't yeah. it supposed to be basically at eye level no matter where you like so in a dining room isn't it supposed to be lower than in a hallway because in a hallway you're standing so eye level is higher and in yeah. a dining room you're sitting so it's not that you want it you know down here but you don't want it up as high in the room or is yeah. that not right you don't want it up as high. So like the general rule of thumb is, is about 60 inches, the center of the art. Okay. And it, it could be a gallery wall, right? right? So it'd be the center of the gallery wall. Yeah, in that case. Okay. yeah, exactly. Should be about 60 inches. So, so, so okay. for example, I've got, um, you know, eight, I don't want to turn the computer and have it be a whole thing, <laughs> but, um, I've got like a gallery of two rows of four, but the center, the center spacing is lower than kind of the standard right, art, right? right. because yeah we, we are sitting when we're when we're yeah. here in space yeah. yeah yeah so 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 hanging artwork too high is something we see all right. the time um and then also just like scale you know if you have mm. a big piece of furniture like this you know this image shows here you get this big side sideboard and the art the artwork is really really tiny it should take up you know two-thirds of the width of the furniture that it's underneath mm -hmm. right a lot of times we see that with TVs too, over console tables, like it'll be too, yep. usually too small, the console table yes. too small for the TV. The TV's overhanging the yeah. console table. Yeah, yep, so. we see that a lot. Um, and then like wrong spacing in between, you know, having mm -hmm. too much space or a gallery wall um, where all the, all the, the frames are, you know, 30 miles apart, <laughs> you know, 30 miles apart or some are 30 and some are 10 and they're like, mm -hmm. you know, they're not equally spaced too. So I'm going to jump back over here real quick to show you. Right. So here, so here's an example. This is a stage that we did um, in a home. And it's it's funny talking about like scale, right? So so properly sized artwork should be about two thirds the width of the furniture uh, that it that it's that it's um above, I should mm -hmm. say. But th this particular stage, the um the owners were concerned, it was it was a new build, and they were concerned that the living room was small and it when it was small like everything in the house was just like a little bit small but when we put out the right size rug which is actually our next tip it made the whole space feel bigger and we were able to get a yeah. full set you can't see because we're, we're blocking here but there was two accent chairs on the other side and just yep. it, it opened up the whole space and right. that's where staging can really help is right. um you know, it, it detracts from potential negatives right. that a client sees. Or just or like just being sees. uninviting, uh, you know, like maybe a small mm -hmm. rug can feel uninviting to anybody walking in the room. So 
you know, especially with staging, that's so important. Yeah, absolutely. So um, do you want to talk about the rugs for a second here? So, so that, that leads us right into the right sized rugs. Yeah. So, yeah. So usually the rugs are too small in the spaces. Um, and when you're, you're considering rug, rug size, it's usually based on the furniture and the, the placement of the furniture. So you at least want to have, you know, the, the front feet of all your furniture on the rug. Mm -hmm. So you can see in the picture, it kind of almost yeah. goes like, like yeah. halfway through each piece of furniture or, yeah. or to just provide that whole area with, with rug and then place your furniture on top. So yeah. it should never just be like right in front of. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. My mom is the queen of two small rugs. She, <laughs> she, so she, she fortunately let me get at it, but like this, this one here is like the, the don't, mm -hmm. um, it's like all the furniture was around this like itty bitty rug and she was in a great room too. I'm like, yeah. mom, oh. please, please put it, you know, a nine by 12 rug in here. This is what yeah. you need. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, so that's another one that we see. And then here, this is an easy one. Anybody oh. can do use plants because right. it brings life to a space. So this mm -hmm. is a before, so this is a stage that we did. So, so just, you know, Matt, like the difference between seeing, you know, an empty room as a, as a buyer, right? Mm -hmm. So again, this is staging for a home to be sold. Like, okay, it's a beautiful space. It's got a nice paint job. There's natural light, but when you put right. furniture in there, you can get the scale of the space. And then when you add plants, you layer in plants with it. And we have a tall plant in the corner. That's, that's probably one of our most favorite tips that we can yeah. give people is when you have a weird funky corner not even a weird corner just any corner and you're like what do i put there a tall yeah. plant yeah. is almost always the solution you know, a lot of times people think you know if they want colors in their rooms that it has to be on the walls or on the furniture on the big pieces yeah it's not the case and i think plants are a perfect example of adding texture and color to a space without going overboard with it mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and then this one we actually used um uh, plants in the artwork as well mm -hmm. to add some more greenery without like totally overloading it with plants. But that that's one of my favorite tips. So, mm -hmm. so, so far we got like right size scale and height for the artwork, right size rugs, plants. Those are, those are the three kind of biggies that we see. And then, so now I want to just give a couple suggestions for, um, you know, when, when you're kind of adding in the next few layers for, de for design. So, so we like to say, create moments. So, um, up here, we're showing an example of a, um, a, a bathroom, a master bath setup, our primary bath setup with a little basket, um, uh, that has a, a little vase and towels hanging out and it creates like a little moment, a little vignette. So they also notice all the plants in the space. Like. <laughs> and now yeah. imagine the space without plants. Right. Right. So, um, in any, space that you're decorating, whether it's your bedroom or a bathroom or a kitchen, you want to create these little emotional connection points. Mm. So, you know, we, in a stage that we did, we had, um, you know, there was an entryway and it was empty and we put like a little bench there and like these cute little purple rain boots on the side mm -hmm. that, you know, and we hung like a mirror and we put like a little bag of some fake flowers hanging out. So just, it looked like yeah. inviting, like, oh, this is a place I could see myself walking in and dropping my keys. Yeah. So those same things that sell a house, are the same things that people want to live in and see themselves living in. Yeah. So, yeah. so think about where, whatever space that you're working with, like where are the moments in the space? You know, if it's a dining room, like, do I want to have like a tray with like some wine glasses ready to go at any moment? You know, yeah. it's like, what, what are those, what are those things? That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, so when you're, mm. when you are starting something from scratch, <laughs> always lay out your big pieces or your furniture pieces on graph paper or a design program if you had it. Most people don't, but simple pencil and graph paper will, will do well because it'll help you to figure out how much spacing should be, you know, around each of the furniture pieces. I won't bore you guys with all that today, but, but you can, when you can see things down on paper, you can play with layouts much more easily, especially if you cut out like the dimensions of things. Um, much more easily than actually physically moving the furniture. Right. You know, you can kind of just get it ready to go from the start. Mm -hmm. And if you're working with a blank space or doing a remodel or something like that, if you start with the graph paper, maybe you are buying new furniture. Okay, I know I can't get a TV console that is any smaller than 72 inches or it's going to look dwarfed compared to everything else. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. so so that also is, is another suggestion we have. And there's just a couple more here. Um, we like to start every project, one with the layout, which we do on either graph paper or on our design program. And then also a mood board. And a mood board, you can think of as like a brand identity for a room. So this is, this is where you're gonna pull in your general color palettes and the overall vibe 
and feel for the space. And it's going to inform the rest of the design. So in this one here, this is a coastal eclectic living room, dining room project that we're working on. And so we want to bring in textures and colors that the client loves. And, you know, maybe she's not going to go with those, you know, $500 Serena and Lily pillows, yeah. but it, but like, okay, this is the overall vibe that you want to go with. So it like, we always tell people start with a Pinterest board. You know, if you're trying to design, you know, a new living room for yourself or a dining room for yourself, like gather images that you like and what are the themes that you see and take your favorites and have that be your brand guide for the space. Like everything is going to come back to, is this on, you know, on brand marketing terms, right? Is this on mm -hmm. brand space right. or am I going to throw like, you know, a neon yellow into the space? Mm, right. Probably not, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not on brand for what, what the vibe is and going I, for. I think, you know, with the mood board, especially like in the, in the client communication piece, it's, it's huge because it's, you know, your first attempt at kind of capturing what they want to live in. Right. And it's hard reading people's minds sometimes mm -hmm. or kind of putting all their ideas together. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you present a board to them and they say, you know, I love this, but it's just missing I want, you know, some brighter blues or some, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't like those particular lights, but I like, you know, I want something more, you know, streamlined or, mm -hmm. or, yeah. or, or yeah. less streamlined. Exactly. Whatever, so this is something really easy that people can do yeah. like as a DIY though. Like if you can yeah. see everything and this is the, like our last slide here. So then once, once you, um, this is actually for a different room, but the color palette's actually similar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a coastal space. Yeah. Um, but then like one of the mistakes that we see people do is buying things randomly, mm -hmm. like a random piece of furniture and a random this. And I like that. And it either ends up one of two ways, nothing goes or works or everything is matchy matchy. Right. <laughs> There's yeah. not too many people that find the balance in the middle. Right. So if you can, like, if you're doing online shopping, you know, you know, take a copy of the image and then put them all onto one slide, use Canva or something like that, right. put them all onto one slides so you can see how will this room fit together it'll save you a lot in and returns in time yeah. and all that mm -hmm. laying, laying everything out like this too you know it helps bring in some of those colors you don't necessarily like notice right away so you know right. i think kind of tying that bright blue picture in with with the bench you know um and again this is a, this is a good example of of tying in something that maybe one person doesn't like in the household and one person does mm -hmm. so it's you know bringing bring styles together um and making sure everything's cohesive. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. Th that. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad that it's helpful. I mean, like those, so that's, those are the, the few things I know we had a, a few examples to, to show people, but, um, and I know that people will be able to see these, you know, with the, the YouTube video or whatever, mm -hmm. but, but so kind of in summary, like right size, height of artwork, right sized rugs. Don't make them too small. It's rare that we see a rug that's too big. Almost never have we seen a rug that's too big. So always go bigger on your rug size, layer in plants. And then if you're working on a room from scratch, use graph paper and gather images. And so you can see everything all at once. So mm. your finished product looks like that inspiration photo that you use. You kind of put it all um, down on paper, so to speak. So you can see how it all pulls together. Like Allison was saying, awesome. so hope that's yeah. helpful for you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. And Canva or, you know, a, a program like Canva really does make that easy to do. You can even do that in, in the free version of Canva. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Canva's great for everything from marketing to, you know, yeah. design stuff like this. And yeah. Um, yeah. And I know we went through stuff really quickly and, um, you know, if there's anything that we can do, if anybody has questions, like we're pretty active on Instagram. So, you know, you can certainly shoot us a, a DM and say, Hey, I've got this space. What would you do here? You know, we'd be more than happy to answer some, some questions from your audience down the road, three years down that's the road, awesome. wherever they're listening to this. Awesome. Yeah. So that's on Instagram at elated spaces. Very cool. And that's also your website URL, elatedspaces.com. Yep. And y'all also do some virtual work, right? We do. We do. Yeah. So um, we, so kind of what we just showed you with like the mood board and the concept board and the floor plan. So we, we've worked with people out of state plenty of times, um, you know, up in Vermont and down in Georgia and Ohio, um, and we're in Connecticut. So, so software is really amazing. So we can have people take photos of a space um, and everything measurements. In, in measurements and then, 
you know, everything that we just kind of walk through, we can do digitally with somebody through video calls and stuff. Um, wow. So we can help design a space virtually as well. So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Zoom is fantastic. When it wants to work. Yeah. <laughs> right. We had our problems today, but yes. yeah. All right. So video, video chats are fantastic. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. this is amazing. I loved your tips on, uh, or your sharing your challenges on entrepreneurship. And I, I didn't ask you any tips for entrepreneurs though. Do you have tips for entrepreneurs? Sure. Um, well, I do. I, I'm going to come up for air. I tend to dominate I, the conversation. No, no. That's <laughs> my idea, so it works for us again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for, you know, just as far as like being a partnership, starting a business, I think that we covered a lot of that. Um, but just that communication piece is huge. It's um, absolutely huge. And, yeah. Don't let things fester. Yeah. And I think too, sometimes, you know, faltering when it's, you kind of, you get to this point where like, I think any entrepreneur is like probably thinking at some point, this is way more work than I expected. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just powering through and doing the things that need to get done. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, you know, we, we spoke to the partnership piece communication for sure, but just anybody starting a business, um, have support, whether mm. that's, you know, other people in your community that are starting businesses. Like we go to a lot of meetups and yeah. stuff. Um, and it's, it's really helpful for us because like we, we were talking to, to somebody recently, um, after that three in the morning, the next morning we were talking to somebody and um, they do staging and they set up uh, vacation rental design. And that that's something that that we're trying to do more of. Um, and we were like, oh, this was our night last night. And they're like, oh, my God, we have one of those once a right. week. You know, right. it's like, oh, thank God. So having right. colleagues that are either on the entrepreneurial journey or in the same industry as you right. is helpful. Having a therapist mm -hmm. or a coach or both, yeah. you know, um, yeah, so I think that that is really helpful. It's too. really validating to know that people go, go through what you're, yeah, what you, the challenges you're facing, and okay, you know, what, I'm not dumb. Like this is normal. I'm not dumb. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. The biggest Otherwise, thing, it, it's so yeah. easy to see other people who are farther along in their journey than you yeah. are, and yeah. and be thinking, oh, they know what they're doing. This is easy for right. them. Yeah. And it's yeah, I I'm just dumb or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's easy to get into that negative self talk. Yeah, yeah. and okay. that's I think the biggest hindrance, as I'm sure you'd agree, Kelly, from you know coaching days and stuff is people getting in their own way around their belief systems. Like, and that, that's the benefit to having each other is like, when I want to give up and I'm falling apart, like mm -hmm. it doesn't happen that often, but when it does, you know, she's like, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> I do exactly that. That's exactly what she did. It's like, okay. That just means we have to, like, I'm a big picture person and she's, she's yeah. more of like the details person. Yeah. So, and in our communication journey, like we found out, like, she's, what do we call it? I'm an energy front loader. You're an energy Oh, I don't even remember. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know. Just like the way that we work. Like I love mm. to start, like, I love to kind of formulate an idea and get it all out, but I'm not good at like fine tuning. So and oh, that's yeah. where you come mm. in. Yeah. It's, I don't know. So it's just all of our discussions and kind of evaluations of everything that we've been through. Yeah. It's just like making everything smoother. Definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. And, knowing and I'm sure there, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say like knowing your, like knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. And if you if you like your weaknesses are going to get in the way at some point. So yeah. try to get support with them sooner than later. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm sure that there are lots of challenges of working in a partnership in a business, but it also sounds like there are a lot of pros to doing it as well. Yeah. You know, you've got that constant support. Yeah. Um, Y'all sound like just a perfect match and yeah. you know, you, you are each other's accountability buddies. Yeah. And so yeah. for entrepreneurs who are working on their own, we really need an accountability buddy. Yeah. You know, having a coach yeah. is awesome, but I Absolutely. think having someone in addition to that, whether it's an accountability group or a buddy, I think is yeah. really important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, Kelly, I know the work that you do with like the, the what was it, the DIYers who don't want to do everything themselves <laughs> for the Scorsese websites. It's like, that people, your people knowing their, their strengths and weaknesses. Like I can kind of get, get myself rolling along here, but ugh, I don't want to have to, I'll get in my own way if I try to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. So you know, a good resource yeah. for that, for people. So it's really yeah. about knowing yourself, which takes us full circle to what we were saying about the self-reflective piece, mm -hmm. you know, in the very beginning. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's, that's right. Know yourself and figure out what you don't know, what you need to learn, what kind of support always you need. To learn. You be good at. <laughs> yes. yeah, exactly. And how do you get there? Yeah. Yes. Always to learn, yeah. always growing. Yep. Yes. That's a, yeah, that's really a key part. Cause yeah, what you don't know doesn't limit you. You can that's always it. learn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. This was so good. I really appreciate y'all being here and sharing all of this. Thank you so, so much. Fun. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it was absolutely. Fun. Your energy is awesome. And you shared <laughs> fabulous design tips and entrepreneur tips. So really appreciate it. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. It was great. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. And again, you listeners and viewers can find Marcy and Allison at elatedspaces.com and on Instagram at elatedspaces. And wherever you're listening to this, I would really love it if you would subscribe and leave a positive review. If you're on YouTube, it would be awesome if you liked and subscribed. You can leave comments on this episode's page on my website at angelakellysmith.com forward slash podcast. The link to this episode is also in the show notes. I'll be back on Tuesday. So I'll see you then back at the Marketing Chat Podcast. Bye. Bye.